All right, so we've talked a little bit about uh, what scales do and sets of things in their behavior. Let, let's take a look at, at a chord structure. Uh, most people, when they teach C major chords, for example, that would give you an A plus uh, in any college if when asked what's in C major. Uh, happily, in some colleges now, uh, that's the answer. Uh, if you're playing with professional so-called jazz, I keep saying so-called jazz because there are jazz musicians who don't like that word. They would prefer just creative music. So we have three notes in the left hand and that's what we call the basic tones of that C major chord. But many creative musicians know that all those are available to you, okay? So if you're playing with certain musicians and you restrict yourself to those chords in certain contexts, then they feel that that's an under-efficient way of playing a C major chord. Mm -hmm. Extra added notes, okay? C minor is another chord quality. Actually, as a matter of fact, uh, when you teach your students uh, about C major and C minor, realize that there are five other qualities that need to be addressed at some point. Not just major chords, but minor, minor seventh chords, minor seventh flat five chords, diminished chords, and dominant chords. Uh, we don't want to leave any of those out because they all have purposes to serve. Uh, take a little inventory with me. C major. C minor. C minor seven. C minor seven flat five. C diminished. C seven with added notes. which gives you on a C7 not four notes that would give you an A plus in certain academic institutions, but four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. What? 14 notes on a C7? Yes, they're all added tones. And I just gave you a set of things. Good question. How do they behave? Every student you have should now ask, what is the set and how does it behave? And that reduces certain things and takes out a lot of the, the unnecessary statements. Okay, so it just happens that that has 14 possibilities. And yes, you said, well, didn't you play two of those that look alike? Yes, but they're spelled differently. Let's take a slower look at your resources for it. We're still in syntax. Remember we talked about the Yusef Latif? Syntax, how notes are arranged. And these are sets. So if you have these notes, which are familiar, I'm sure, to a lot of you. Okay, C major. Seven notes, not three. You can spell so you can communicate with other musicians or teachers or whatnot, teachers to students, students to other peers or whatnot. You can spell a chord by letter name. One may spell a chord by tension name, or one may spell a chord by interval quality. Now, for those who are advanced enough, let's look, take a look at that. C major chord, spelled by letter name. C. E. G. A. B. D. F sharp. Remember the sharp? Okay. I just spelled C major by 
letter name. And we started out by spelling the first, first three notes, which we call the basic tones, and then we put in the added tones, okay? So there, there they are again. We said that we could spell it by a tension name. By tension, that's called the root. That's called the third. Happens to be one, two, three notes away from the root. That's called the fifth, six, one, two, three, four, five, six notes away. Seven, nine, and raised 11. That would have been 11, so to speak, but it's raised 11 by convention. This note does not exist in C major, and not essentially. Okay, so we just spelled it by uh, tension name, root, third, fifth, sixth, seventh, ninth, and raised 11. As a matter of fact, and incidentally, if you take every one of those notes physically and move them to the left, to the nearest physical key, there's a B major. Hint, hint, if you want to become an excellent musician, what you learn one place, put it all over the place in terms of all other 12 places that they may be located. Uh, that hint is not too explicit, but if you learn something one chord here, Learn it here too. Same chord, same structure. Learn them everywhere. Okay? Learn them everywhere. So we didn't spell it yet by interval quality. So we said that there were three ways of spelling a chord. By letter name, by tension name, and by interval quality. Now whether or not you have um, a full knowledge of intervals, uh, it would not hurt for us to, to ex uh, explore that anyway. There's a root. Uh, that's, not a, that's not an interval quality because it's not an interval, it's just a one note. We call that a major third. All major chords have major thirds available. That's called a perfect fifth. We're simply saying the names. That's a major six. There's your major seven, Major 9, augmented 11. C major by interval quality. Root. Major 3rd. Perfect 5th. Major 6. Major 7, Major 9, raised 11. That's true for every chord that's major. They all get spelled the same way. I'm now playing an A major chord, and there are three ways of spelling it. I'm now playing a G major chord, and there are three ways of spelling it. The three ways, again, are by letter name, by interval quality, and by tension name. So when, a, when one musician says to another, uh, let's voice that one, five, seven, nine. One, five, seven, nine. They have a way of communicating with each other 